In the last video, we learned the property that if you have a triangular matrix, then the determinant comes from a product of the diagonal entries. Let's uh, let's just uh, do do an example of that. So um, let's find the determinant of this matrix two zero 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 three four zero 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 six negative one zero and one five negative ten three so as you could see here we have a lower triangular matrix and so from property seven that we just learned in the previous video I can find the determinant by multiplying the diagonal entries so here the determinant is two times four times negative one times three okay that's negative twenty four so the determinant is easy for triangular matrices and obviously since diagonal matrices are triangular then this works for diagonal matrices as well alright going back to properties let's look at property 8 if a matrix is singular which means not invertible its determinant is 0 if it is invertible then the determinant is not 0 Okay, a better way to write this, perhaps a more concise way to write this, is to say the determinant of A is equal to zero if and only if A is singular. Parentheses not invertible. Okay. So how do we how do we establish this? Um, Assume the matrix is invertible. If the matrix is invertible, then the row echelon form of A has pivots in every row. And so eventually, using row operations, you can turn any square matrix to have ones on the main diagonal and zeros below the diagonal in which case the determinant of this matrix might have factored out negative signs if we did row operations it might have factored out uh, numbers if we used linearity and factored out numbers from each row using linearity and so using row operations if the matrix is invertible then we could always get the row echelon form to have ones on the main diagonal and have it upper triangular okay and we would factor out non-zero quantities we may need to factor out non-zero quantities and negative signs and so forth the determinant of this matrix of this matrix here is one because it's one times one times one from before so we would get k non-zero number if it's invertible now if the matrix was singular if it was not invertible then in the row echelon form we would have a row of zeros one of, this, one of the rows would not have a pivot. We would have a free variable, in other words, in the system. And so remember that that is a necessary thing that will happen in the row elimination process. We'd have a row of zeros. And we know from before that if you have a row of zeros, then the determinant is zero. So this would be k times zero, which is zero. Not k, which is zero. So that establishes that fact, that the matrix determinant is zero only if you have a singular matrix okay now one of the things that comes from this is a really cool fact is that this k that's that's coming out of row operations is coming out of the pivots okay the pivots are the non-zero numbers we're using to eliminate and so K is just a product of the pivots, and the plus or minus in this sentence comes from depending on if we use row exchanges to do the elimination. So we have the pivots, and the plus minus comes from whether we do row operations of uh, factoring out the pivots to get the ones. Okay, so that's a really cool consequence of, of uh, this proof, actually.